Hi everybody, in this video I want to show you how you can handle your emails and calendar with ChatGPT. You will need an Outlook account to make this work. I will first show you the project and then how it's built. You can get the code from my GitHub repository as always. So for this project to work you need ChatGPT4, so you need ChatGPT Plus and you need also the plugin system and it has to be available in your system. So what I can do now is I ask a question, did Data Mastery write me an email? What does he want? Then ChatGPT will try to retrieve the latest emails and check if someone called Data Mastery wrote it. This is my old name on YouTube, as you can see here in my email. And yeah, yes, Data Mastery sent you an email. The subject is hello and the content is, hey, what do you want? It would really be nice to meet you again, how are you? Okay, very nice, so I can see ChatGPT was able to retrieve the information from the email and I can tell, okay, well, answer him that I would be really glad to meet him on Sunday uh, in 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, what ChatGPT does now is write an email back to Data Mastery and I should be able to see this email now in my inbox. And here you can see the email. Hello Franz. Okay, I didn't uh, tell him my actual name here. So currently um, <laughs> ChatGPT does not know my name, so I have a placeholder here. But as you can see, it works. And so I can also ask, add this to my calendar, please. And ChatGPT will add this appointment here to my calendar. Okay, as you can see, I've added the meeting with Data Mastery to your calendar, and I can now see that it's actually working. Pretty nice, isn't it? Okay, now let's look at the code. If you don't know anything about ChatGPT plugins yet, I would recommend you to watch this video first as a basis. So as you can see, I've got an app.py, which will contain all the logic here, and this will be built with fast API. We need a web service to communicate from localhost to ChatGPT. And to make it a complete plugin, you also need three additional files, a logo.bng, uh, which contains an image. You can choose whatever you want here. And then the openapi.yaml, and this file will explain the API schema to the model so ChatGPT can interact with it. And another file, AI plugin.json, and this file will contain additional information like the name for the human, this is the name in the store, and the name for ChatGPT. So it actually knows how to retrieve data and what and when and what to use in this plugin. Like I said, you can get a detailed explanation of this topic in my introduction video. So what did I do here to make this work with emails. I first installed some packages, of course, and uh, I've done it here with FastAPI and Pydentic, and also Ubicorn uh, to serve my app server, and I used the library exchangelib, and this is responsible for making Python or the API communicate with your Outlook account. And then I also used beautiful soup to parse some HTML elements which come with the email, and uh, pass it to text and also python.env to store my credentials safe on my computer. This is um, my account and my password. This I will of course not show to you. So now we've got the app.py and we of course have to first import the relevant packages. I import some uh, something here from typing, optional and list, and then I import the beautiful soup class and another parser um, which is able to parse dates. And then from .env I uh, load load.env and now from exchangelib I will use multiple classes like account, attendee, calendar items, mailbox messages and so on, which allow you to interact with your Outlook account. And after that I will import uh, from FastAPI the FastAPI class and response class and course middleware because otherwise here localhost would not be able to communicate with ChatGPT. So now first I load the environment variables which uh, store my credentials, like I said, my uh, username and my password for Outlook. Then I create an app instance of FastAPI. And here I actually create my 
account instance. First, I load my credentials. As you can see, I will get my email and my password from the environment variables and also an account instance where I also need my email. And the credentials will be the credentials instance which I created here. So after that, I will add course middleware to my app to be able to talk to chat.openai.com. And then I will create some simple models here which contain the data, like uh, an email will have a subject, a body and an email address. And email data will contain a subject, body, author and name. And another is the calendar item model. And this will contain a subject, body, location, start date, end date, and attendees in this appointment. So like I said, you need three files to make it a complete plugin and you have to expose them in your API. So I expose this uh, logo.png and I also expose the AI plugin.json and I also expose the openai.yaml. After that, we can now implement the business logic of the app. So what we're going to do now is we will create another endpoint, the email endpoint, and we will create an email with the email model here. So what we're going to do here is first we create a message instance. We set it up with our account and also uh, a folder where our emails get sent, then a subject and a body. And we will also, of course, send the email to some recipients and this will be email.email address. Everything here is contained in this email class. So that's the email address we are gonna, where we're going to send our email to. And now we have got our message instance. And at the end, we want to send it. So it's pretty easy to set this up. And at the end, we're just going to return the email. So pretty easy to actually create an email and send it to another email address. And the second endpoint is the calendar. And this will contain multiple information like the uh, subject, start date, end date, and so on. And first I will get the start date and the end date and parse it to make it an actual date. So I do this for the start date and the end time. And then we will define a time zone. Here I use Europe, Berlin, because I live in Germany. And you can, of course, use whatever you want. And then I will take the start time here and replace this time zone info with this here. After doing that, I will set an attendees variable to none. And if I've got attendees in my item, so in the calendar, which is uh, a list, of attendees here. What I'm going to do now is loop over this item and create an attendees list here from um, an instance of the attendee class. Okay, so now I have got an attendees list and now I can create a calendar item and this will just contain a folder, a subject, a start date, end date, and so on. Everything which will be included here is coming from this calendar item model. And the attendees can be none if I don't uh, specify anyone, or they will contain a list of the attendee instance. So after creating that, I will just call the save method on this instance, and the calendar entry will be saved in my calendar. Okay, and then I will just return the item. And the last one is actually getting the emails. So what I'm going to do here now is I want to read the latest emails and I can call from the account class. This has an inbox attribute. And if I call the all method here and order them by the daytime received, I can retrieve the latest, how, whatever emails I want. I call the latest 10 emails. And what I'm, I'm going to do now here is create first an empty list and I loop over this list here and I will parse the latest emails here to the beautiful soup body parser and from type HTML parser because my emails will be in HTML but I want to retrieve the text information from this HTML. So I have to parse it through some HTML parser. 
and then I will just try to get the text. Okay, after parsing the text, I create an email data instance, and this will contain the parsed body. Now not uh, the HTML, but actually just the relevant information, the subject, the author email address and the author name. So what I'm gonna do now is I will append this information to the empty email list. So this in, uh, email list at the end will contain every past information of the email I retrieved here in this list. So at the end I will just return it and now everything should work. So this is my API. It got three endpoints to retrieve the latest emails, create a calendar item and to actually write an email. That's pretty easy to set up and pretty effective. And when you want to use it, you just have to make sure that the server is running. You can run it with Ubicorn. And since we've got an app.py, we have to use app and then here points uh, app. That's the name of the app instance here. So first, this is the name of the file without an .py ending. And this is the, the app instance. And then you call it on a port where, where the server has to run. It's currently running on port 4,444. And I specified this information in my AI plugin.yaml. As you can see, this port has to match this port here. And if everything is correct and the server is set up correct, you can now add this plugin to your email, add to your um, store, plugin store. If the server is running correct, just go here to plugin store then, go to develop your own plugin and here type localhost 444, find manifest file. If everything is correctly set up, you will now see validated manifest and validated open API spec. So you have to see that's working and now you can just activate and deactivate it and your plugin is ready to use. Okay, that's it. That was pretty easy to set up, wasn't it? If you liked the video, feel free to give me a thumb up and subscribe to my channel. Bye bye.